My name is Nelias Mukami Moura. I am a businesswoman. I have a fashion house and I also have an events company. I am married to Isaac Moura. My name is Isaac Moura. I am a politician. I am a senator in the Kenyan Senate, a member of parliament serving a second term. And uh, I'm married to Nelias Mukami. This is our third year in marriage. And we've known each other since the year 2012. When I first met Maura, um, I, I, I really didn't, didn't know where it was going. So it was just a casual coffee date. Um, yeah, and he, of course, people were looking at us. So it was a bit, um, I, it was a bit uncomfortable when you go somewhere and everyone is looking at you. I think mainly it's because he had a, another big coffee, a god papa. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm sure guys are wondering why he's wearing it. Yeah, so, um, yeah, it was, it was just a casual coffee date. I, I really didn't have an opinion then. It was through a mutual friend. So, and then we became friends on social media. Then I would look at her photos and say, oh, you're so beautiful. This girl was so beautiful. I was taken by her beauty. So we struck a conversation. I don't remember who said hi first. The, usual, the first hi. It was you. <laughs> uh, I think it was you. But anyway. <laughs> so we, we started a conversation. And um, I, I, I asked her, we go out for, on a date. I picked her from the office. And yes, I was not disappointed when I met her. But I think... Uh, what for me was a game changer. Uh, I was sick that time. I had a sick toe and Bukami took care of me so well. There and then I knew this was a wife material. <laughs> uh, she, she took care of me very, very well. And uh, that, that impression never left uh, me. Uh, despite the fact that later on we, we broke up. He broke up with me because um, he said the reason was he wanted to get married and he <laughs> thought I was young. I was too young to get married then. Yeah, so it was, it was one of those things <laughs> that had to happen. It was okay because later when we came back together, it, we were a bit more settled, more mature. We had realistic expectations. So it was, um, we were still friends. Yeah, so she would call me when uh, she wants to talk to someone. Said now, <laughs> at some point it struck me and said, now what is it I'm looking for? There's somebody here. And I kept on telling her that she's mine. I told her, where we are to Kenda Wapi, you are mine. <laughs> well, you're my <wrong. laughs> And it's true. <laughs> <laughs> So Actually, there's a day, I, I think I was out on those meetings. In 2013, there were so many meetings on devolution and all that. And they were basically attended by, I think, people who are looking for opportunities to run and all that. And I remember one day him calling me and telling me, who are you speaking with? <laughs> <laughs> Don't speak to such people. Don't speak to them. I, I am watching you. Remember your mind. <laughs> I was very angry. I felt like he was following me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she called me actually. And she was sharing with me the way she has always shared with me. Because if she wanted to talk to somebody, she would call me. Say the truth. That's the truth. Now, going Not forward. Even <laughs> you, when what? you want to talk to somebody, you would call me. Yes. Now, we said, now let's meet for coffee. So we met at Hill Park Hotel. I popped the question, now can we get back together? And then she said, oh, that ship has since sailed. I don't know where it, it <laughs> sailed to. It appeared to have come back to the shore and gotten its passengers. At that time, uh, when we set up the date, what I told to myself, what I told myself is if, like it would be the determinant, if I didn't have a nice time, then I wouldn't even waste my time. Like, you know, there are those things you go and you're like, ish, ish, you want to try, you don't want to try. So I, I just made up my mind. If it didn't make sense then, then it would never make sense. But um, when we went, we had such a nice time. We didn't even, even know when it was getting to around 
11. So at that point, he was like, you know what, if we are getting back together, we're getting back together to date for marriage, not just to date for the sake of dating. I had a goal in life that I will not get married until I put up a house for my family. So we had a ceremony here and the people are teasing me that uh, I need to get married. Why do I have a house without a wife? And it was very funny, but she was there seated huh? because she was the one who, uh, she's the one who uh, had helped me to uh, do one or two, three things in terms of the furnishing of the house. So for me, th that was very good that we started our home the way I wanted, you know, in our own place. And uh, that was in September. In December, we set up our wedding day. It was 27th December. Oh, no. November. November 27th. Oh. Yeah, so November 27th, we set up our wedding day and we said we are going to be married on June 27th. So uh, then we also set up the dates where we would go to do the dowry. But this was before engagement. Because I kept asking him whether he'll go down on one knee and propose. But he used to say that that's not African. Like you've, we've already set the wedding date. Why do you need me to propose? As in an engagement doesn't mean anything. So I was just like, wow. So <laughs> I even just got comfortable and settled down and I was just not expecting. So one day one of our friends came to my house and and she was just asking questions and she was looking over rings dresses and she was like she's looking forward to her wedding and she was like what engagement ring would i like she gave me photos and she was like do you prefer an, a public engagement or a private engagement and i was like why would i want a private engagement no one will know that i'm engaged i remember then the following day I was supposed to pick him up at the airport, so we had a sleepover. And when we go to the airport, <laughs> it's a bit funny because I said hi, we hugged, and then like he went to say hi to her, and they, their hug took a bit longer, a minute longer than it should have. So I was just like, okay, so what's happening there? <laughs> so we went, and um, I, I had a meeting with my chama. And then he was hurrying me up, asking me, when are you coming, when are you coming? I was like, okay, let me just come. So when I finished and I got the piece of cake, it, was a, a, it had a ring on top and it was written, will you marry me? So of course I was shocked. I almost, I almost um, let it fall down. Eh? But um, it was a good surprise. It was a very good surprise. Um, yeah, so <laughs> then he came and got down on one knee, asked me if I would marry him. That one was a shocker. I didn't expect it, honestly, and I'm very hard to surprise. I knew uh, the only way to corner her was to make her not expect anything. <laughs> now that has been a trick that I've used over and over again. Because then if I tell her, then it will be no surprise. <laughs> so I planned together with uh, our family friends uh, people were close to us and uh, yeah, that was it. So on Monday we released the photos on social media and then we saw them all over. I don't know, we were wondering. You could see them in blogs. I think that time we were, not, we were even oblivious of these things called blogs or whatever. You could see them everywhere in the Nairobi and in uh, Pulse, whatever. They went viral. And then on, uh, is it April? March, April. Yeah, we did the March. We went to see her parents as my friends. We asked that we, will, we 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 gave notice that we will come with our parents, and then we did the first visit uh, in Embu. It was very nice. They sang for us, but then we were given a second date, uh, which we came back and we asked for the wedding, which you we were given. Uh, the difference between uh, Kikuyu and Embu tradition is that. In the dowry, in the bride price negotiation, there's something called Gushu. Because Mukami is Embu and Kikuyu. It's good uh, also to, to say that. So Gushu is a, a house where as an in-law, you as a, as, as a, as a, as a, as a, eh? is it groom or bride? <laughs> Which one? The bridegroom. 
yeah you 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 kind of give some money to for you to be put for up for a house where you would be living there if you visited there and uh, that means you'll also be counted in terms of war as one of your soldiers traditionally even without the wedding your union is kind of recognized Mm. It's not kind of, it's actually it's, it's recognized. Actually, you're married. Yeah, yeah. You're not married. You can even mm. be allowed to live together mm. before the, the white the church wedding. Traditionally. The wedding is for the, for the, for the, for the bride, honestly. There yeah, are things that uh, don't matter to men, like color, like what <laughs> you wear that day. <laughs> Those are things that uh, we handled. We really work together. Because a wedding day is the first project that you, you as a couple do it together. So it really brings a lot about yourselves. Uh, and I am very happy because it's a project we very well executed. Uh, but I'm talking as a man. Now, let's hear what you have to say because <laughs> the nuances of a wedding are to the lady. No, it, 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 was, it was a beautiful wedding. I love my wedding. Yeah. We, organ we only had about three committee meetings. Planning committees, because because you also need to, you see, you're, you'll be there, as in you won't even be there during the grounds, uh, to the grounds during when people are getting to eat and everything. So we really needed like a group of people who would help with the planning. Yeah, so we 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 really had a great time, honestly. Uh, the wedding attracted a lot of people. It was a big wedding, really, two thousand five hundred people. And those cards only. <laughs> so you can imagine, even the 1600 cards only. But see now, if, if the problem we're having, like we gave our parents the numbers, we shared numbers. So you have this number. Mm. But then you find, okay, you get the actual number, but then your mom has written Mr. and Mrs. as it's one, one person. one number. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so, uh, but it was really fun. Um, we had people from all walks of life, from normal people to all the way. Uh, to you know, Raila Odinga and uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta. So yes, it was a great day. In fact, Mr. Odinga stayed with us for four hours and uh, the whole wedding. So um, the president was coming to the main wedding, but then uh, the the president of South Sudan came. So without notice, actually, <laughs> it's good to say this. So he had to host in a state house. But they had already deployed the, the security. Security, we had so many policemen at the wedding. Yes, so, so many policemen. At some point it looked funny. I think over 50 or something, many of them. And, uh, but then the, the, his private secretary, his PA came, uh, delivered a speech and gave us a, a, a gift. And then, as, and then he said that the president would want to see us at the earliest time possible. And after the photo shoot outside the church service, um, as the church, uh, you know, uh, after the church service, we were ushered into the presidential motorcade. And uh, ourselves and our MC, we were whisked to State House. And then we found the president waiting for us. Yeah, it is the first wedding, uh, really, to ever visit State House, it's true to say that. <laughs> it is the first one in the history of this republic. It was really a great, great wedding. We felt very honored. It was a number one story in the newspapers the following morning. In fact, when we were going for a massage in the morning, and then like the paper, the way the people get fit, when we were yeah. looking at, oh, what is this here? Then our photo was yeah, splashed in on the, the front page. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, we felt like Cinderella. Cinderella. <laughs> was a beautiful story. <laughs> um, the honeymoon was a surprise. We went to Bali. Bali in Indonesia. Yeah, so I, I'd always wanted to go to Bali actually. Yeah, so it has really, really beautiful beaches. It has the best massages. I think we had a massage every day. <laughs> <laughs> it has, it has like, like massages are done in kibandas. You know, like how we buy nini, smoky on, like, like that's their mass, massages are like that and they are cheap. You know, so yeah, it was fun. It was really fun. Of course, we had to come back home. 
but it was really really fun the first year of marriage was um, blissful you know it was happily ever after <laughs> yeah it was it, i wouldn't say apart from those issues of trans um you 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 kind of moving from living alone having your own space having managing your own time managing your own money managing everything to now sharing space you have to manage each other's um diaries you have to do things together you have to you're now accountable to each other adjusting to that it lasts for quite some time really and then now the, being in the same space you know fighting over small issues <laughs> who has squeezed which toothpaste how <laughs> <laughs> who has left the toilet lid open, who has left socks where, who's made the bed. So those things now start looking. And it looks very hard. <laughs> then you realize there's a difference between a, a wedding and marriage. We fight like any other couple. But, uh, and we do, we do because we are, we are two very extroverted individuals, which is not normal. You find many people have the other person is quite there, alone. but both of us are allowed. <laughs> we, we are both very extroverted people. But the beauty about it is that we resolve the issue. We are candid with each other. We don't hide. If you feel you've been wronged, we have a way of expressing it, and we resolve and we move on. We don't pretend. Yeah. So, um, but we've gone through our ups and downs, a lot of them. Uh, yeah, like during our wedding, people are telling us we should get 10 children. <laughs> <laughs> like any other couple, we wanted to have them immediately. It doesn't happen. And that's something we need to tell couples. <laughs> if, if you want to have children, it becomes mechanical. Don't. <laughs> children come naturally. Don't try to make it look like, okay, this is the time that we are going to get children. And it is going to happen at this o'clock. It's not going to. <laughs> it is not going to happen. So, of course, we also pass through that same phase, and I'm sure many, many people will connect with us on that one. But anyway, uh, we got pregnant. Um, my pregnancy was hard. It was, um, I think, for me, my morning sickness lasted all through till I delivered. Okay, pregnancies are different. But mine was a difficult one. I was, it was delicate. I was on bed rest almost the whole time. I think I would be put on full bed rest, partial bed rest, full bed rest, partial bed rest. Yeah, I, I, and then it was very heavy for me. Like I couldn't walk. I would walk and I would feel tired. And I grew big very fast. Like I was showing, by, by the time I was 10 weeks, I was showing. We were expecting three children, which was very exciting because, I mean, you, you, you dream of having twins, but you don't think it would happen to you. So the, the, the prophecy of ten children now was being fulfilled <laughs> in our own eyes. So we started asking ourselves, are they going to be boys, girls? I mean, it, it's not just hard for a mother, a, a, a first-time mother, but also the, the expectant father. Because you don't know. You don't know how you're dealing. I mean, your wife is just a crazy person. You don't know. She's having mood swings. Mara natapika. Mara sijui ni mugonjwa. Mara utaki mkaribie. Una feel like you are the greatest enemy. So you really wonder, what is it? how do I deal with this? And I think men must come out and speak because it's very difficult sometimes to be a, a husband to a pregnant woman. It's very difficult. So we were expecting triplets, eh? um, but the pregnancy was a bit complicated and I developed early labor. Uh, so I had to go to hospital at night and several times, but now the last time they tried to reverse the labor, it was not possible. So I had to be taken for an emergency CS at 28 weeks and that's when we had the babies. And of course, they were premature. They were all very small, weighing about one between 1.0 to 1.1, 1.2. And um, we stayed in the NICU for a while, 11 weeks. And by the time we were leaving, we had lost two. 
and the boy and the girl and we came home with one the the middle one yeah so it was it was a very difficult period because of course watching your baby first the girl died after two days so and i watched her i watched them try to resuscitate her i watched her now start bleeding and everything until the time they placed her in my arms and told me she was gone and then i had to stay in hospital for all those weeks trying to visiting the baby expressing milk for for them because they had they were purely on exclusive my doctor did not recommend formula it was it was difficult and at the same time he was campaigning for the primaries and um he was not as available as he would have wanted or we would have wanted. So when I saw them and the, the neonato, neonatologist could not allow me to hold my babies, I was wondering why. So it's, it was, they were being transported one by one. I was the first to see them because their mother was not there. She was still in the theater, in the, in the ward. And, um, and uh, then I was allowed to go see them. Then everybody around me was happy because I told them then, I mean, my, my wife has, has gone to deliver. But then I, for me, I was shocked because I didn't know what it is that we were celebrating. Okay, it's, it's later than people came to understand, but it was a very difficult journey. It's something that we would never, ever wish on anyone uh, to be Niko. It's a difficult journey. And uh, uh, parents who get premature babies, they know this story. It's difficult, the costs are very high. We were left with a bill of 11.2 million shillings, and it was needed to clear. It was in the midst of primaries. We had spent a lot of money. Uh, went to the primaries. There was also a, some violent confrontation with one of my competitors, which I also ended up being injured, but I thank God I have now recovered. So it was not very easy, but we, we thank God. He gave us such a grace that I don't know how I can explain it. It was just a period of very mixed, many, but the most important thing is we had a baby and the baby was healthy. He brought some, some kind of soberness because at the end of the day he, he needed our care. We needed to take care of him. He needed our love and we could not take away the love we had for him to mourn who we had lost. He, he brought a lot of joy. He's taught us how to love. He's taught us how to be patient because his, his developmental milestones are a bit slow. So we've learned how to be patient and wait. We work with his time, we work with God's time. And he's, he's, really, he's really grown to, to, to a, a very handsome and funny little boy. <laughs> we were under a lot of tests, but we, it tested our marriage so much. Uh, but then we were able to stand together and uh, so it was it was difficult. So it was really difficult, and it taught it, it made us to mature and to grow very fast. Of course, mourning takes time, grieving takes time, and you can never put a time limit to grieving. And especially for a mom who has lost a child, it's it's hard for you to forget. It's hard for me to look at other people with multiples and think, wow, that would have been me, you know. But also, I think for me, and I think for him. I would say that God has given us a lot of a lot of amazing grace that we can just learn to live with what has happened to us and and appreciate God for even giving us the opportunity to be parents of triplets. You know, at the end of the day, I usually say I'm still a mom to triplets. Hmm? Whether they are here or not, I'm still a mom and that's an honor, you know. That's an honor to have carried three lives. Yeah, so at the end of it all, I think the whole situation has made us stronger. It has made us come together as a family and know that at the end of the day, at the end of the day, we are together. To mothers who have delivered premature babies, I think the most important thing is to have hope because these children need our hope for them to survive. and. Trust me, they are the biggest fighters, they are the strongest fighters you'll ever meet because they are fighting to live. What you have to do is to have hope. Make sure you tell them, 
make sure you go to spend time with them and tell them that you look forward to them leaving the hospital and then live a day at a time and do not ever ever compare your baby to other babies my advice would be for any uh, person out there in the public domain uh, family comes first and you cannot compromise family with anything uh, people may be around you they may praise you they may give you all sorts of accolades but it all boils down to your family your wife and children those are the people who matter most and uh, God never fails his own yeah and marriage is beautiful I would want to be married uh, to Mokami for the longest that God can give us. Marriage is beautiful and I'm happy that I'm married to her. And uh, those out there who are cynical about marriage, it's not easy, it's not for the faint-hearted, but uh, a lot of the problems we are having in society is because of the absent father. The father wounds. Fathers who are not there for their families, who are not there providing, who are under fathering, so men must rise up and take their rightful role because if you are a present father and if you play your role well, you are also enhancing and redefining masculinity, which is under threat now because of the changing times in the world. So we've got to take up a rightful place as men so that we can guide the society going forward. Maura's love language is um, words of affirmation and acts of kindness. Yes, it's true. Uh, acts of service. Acts of service. Yes. Okay. Yeah, Mokami's love language is gifts and uh, words of affirmation. Gifts, sana sana, yes. Uh, Mokami's favorite color is yellow. Yes, and his too, mm. yellow. If Mora is having a bad day at work or wherever, the first thing I would give him is a good meal and um, tell him that he did well and then ensure that he's comfortable and give him attention for whatever he wants to say or vent, yeah. Yes, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Especially that part of listening and encouragement. If Mukambi is having a bad day, and she actually does have them, um, the first thing that I should, I should do is not to give her solutions, it's <laughs> to listen. It's to listen and to appreciate and to empathize. And then uh, we both agree on what needs to be done. She doesn't like to be told, now do this, do that. She would want me to listen and I provide that listening ear and then now we can agree on the way forward. Sometimes it's just listening. Yeah, the one gift that I have bought him, that I think he likes, or he likes. Number one is um, some sandals I bought him, hash puppies. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's true. <laughs> the, the engagement ring seems to excite her a lot, this one, this, this one. This, yeah. is, this is a marriage one, but this is a good, I keep on seeing it, and I go, oh, one <laughs> stone is out. <laughs> that is the one thing that I think I can say that has really excited her. Yeah, I love my engagement ring. The one place that Mokami would like to go in 2018 is Dubai. <laughs> is Dubai. That one she would really want to go and I know. Uh, but I'm also taking her to seashells. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the place I think he would like to go, you know I can't take him. <laughs> you want me to take you is Papua and New Guinea I know he'd like to go there and um, where else he would he like to go you know he travels a lot so most of the countries he'd, he's wanted to go he'd, I also know he'd like to go to Lesotho Lesotho and um, Brazil yes South America. Yeah, yes. that's right. Papua New Guinea, yes. Because I used to work there sometime. Oh.